Good day. I feel like I should be saying good morning because I'm kind of, well, you know how it is. Um, my name is Jos Wijks, as Mel told me, uh, as, as Mel told, and I'm a member of Hack42, which is a hackerspace in Arnhem. Uh, Arnhem is in the Netherlands. The Netherlands has about 14 hackerspaces, depends how you count. Um, so, yeah. And uh, our hackerspace is, of course, the best, because that's the way it should be. And um, I'm also the uh, mastermind behind the Beehive 4.2 Tech Campus, and that's a non-profit that was in the process of buying this piece of real estate and turning it into a international hacker campus. But this week we learned we're out a bit, so that's not going to happen. But still, cool idea. That's not why I'm here. I'm here because I'm a member of Tool. I'm, um, I'm a board member actually, and Tool is the open organization of lockpickers, uh, founded in the Netherlands. And um, yeah, we open locks as a sport, uh, mostly without keys, uh, unless we file them ourselves. And um, well, without force and without weird stuff, we open locks. Um, that might sound funny, well not to this guy, but to normal people that sounds funny, it's a bit James Bondy, it must be illegal. So we have a short couple of rules that are supposed to keep us out of trouble. Only pick locks that you own, or you have explicit permission from the actual owner that you're allowed to pick that, and try to refrain from picking locks that you rely on. Because at some point you will fail, and then you can't open or you can't close your front door again. That's so. If you oblige to those simple rules, you're probably okay. Okay, um, but before we start off with a video. for this, but um, <laughs> the good thing is this ad is made by an insurance company, so at least if your house gets looted, we know who's going to pay for it. Um, this is uh, actually done by a Belgian secure, uh, uh, insurance company, and what you saw was that they put a key on a pedestal and then they took a quite elaborate 3-day scan from it. Mind you, this was a couple of years ago. Um, cool. And then they print it. Does it work? Yes, it works. It works quite well. If you're living in a more backward country, let's say the United States, <laughs> um, then we can do other stuff. This is a website called Schlüssel. I don't think they exist anymore because reasons. <coughs> <laughs> what uh, they do it, they just said, send us a picture of your key. Just a picture. Snap and we'll mail you a duplicate. For five quid, you have a duplicate at home. Again, I would not use my home address for that. But it's kind of cool, because what they did, they made some quite interesting software to analyze the pictures you send them. Uh, they don't just duplicate your key, they figure out what, what key it is, and then figure out what the actual code was, not is, was. So if you look at this picture, here you see that the cut that the software determined is higher than the actual cut in there. So there is a more than average chance that the key you get in the post 
will work better than the one you took a picture of. And it's quite cool. Right? So, snap picture. And again, this is not rocket science. Um, the reason why the Belgians had to take a 3D scan and the Americans get away with just a picture is that uh, Americans only have a couple of keys. You have a Schlick and a Quickset and you have a whole lot of weird stuff that nobody actually buys because it's very expensive. So a normal household will have a Schlick or a Quickset. So one picture will definitely be enough to figure out what blank you need and of course the code is easy as fuck, right? So that's how they do it. And actually there are other companies who use the same technique and incorporate that in their business model. This is Outbox, also out of business because of reasons. And they operated in Manhattan and what they did, they were basically a reverse mailman, a reverse physical mailman. So they show up to your actual front door, take your mail, take it to their offices, scan it and email it to you. <laughs> It's kind of cool. So you can read your physical spam even if you're abroad. Australia Post offers the same service. But they don't, uh, the, the gentleman said Australia Post offers the same service, but I don't think they first deliver the mail, then come and collect it. <laughs> they open it, scan it, I mean, and then mail it, and then email it to you, reseal it, and mail it to you as well. Okay, hmm. interesting. Well, I've, 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 I've had Australian Post do weird shit. But, um, <laughs> I wouldn't trust them to open in my mail, let's, let's put it like that. But Outbox does that, and of course, in order to do that, they have to reach your physical mail. Australian mail already has that, so that would be easy peasy. Uh, but these guys, well, they need access to the place where your mail is. So they say, we want your keys, all of them. How do you give them? Well, uh, snap pictures. So you have a gate, you want a picture of the gate key, or your door, or your mailbox, or whatever, except for your front door, that's where they stop. Of course they can do that, but Americans, you can get sued, they have guns, God knows what. So they decided not to do that. So if you do have a slit in your door where the mail goes in, they give you a box to hang outside your door so they can open that. So making keys from pictures and incorporating that in your business model is definitely not new. So th that's been done before. And actually a lot of research was, was done on this. Uh, this is an, also a normal picture. This is an OK camera with a more than OK lens. What you can do with big lenses is zoom in quite a lot. That's what they did. Um, the tiny picture, there's a book on a table on a terrace and there are skis on that book. And if you zoom in enough, which you can do from quite a distance as you can see, you can see keys, right? Let's take that key on the right, for, uh, for example. What we can do, if we take that picture, and uh, if you know your keys, and if you know your American keys, you see this is a quick set. You can see that by the peculiar shape of the head. That's fun, because that head is always the same size. It should be dead on. So you can get markers on your key, and even if your picture is not dead on, you can start alternating and shaping it, and sizing it until that head is the correct shape. And if everything moves with it correctly, all the other bits will also be correct then. So from this skewed picture, you can alter, 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 decode that lock from the other side of the street. Right? Kind of cool. So showing your keys is basically showing your passport, uh, password. Showing the post-it with your passport on it. Password on it, sorry. <laughs> So all the codes that are dear to you are in the open if you show your luck. Key, sorry, not awake. Okay, other example. These are the hands from Ray. Uh, Ray is a German lock collector and he's, uh, he collects a, a lot of locks and he's particularly interested in handcuffs. He just loves his handcuffs and has a huge collection. This is the handcuff key to all the German police handcuffs all of them, and well, if you think, you might think that's really stupid, why would you key those alike? Well actually, it's not that stupid if you think about it a bit longer, because if you get arrested by couple number one, and he puts you in cuffs, puts you in the police car, drives you to the police station, hands you off to an ex-cop, it's kind of cool that he can open your cuffs also. 
Otherwise, key control would be quite massive, as every police officer has their own I, uh, unique keys. That would be weird. So it's not atypical that handcuff keys from police officer are key to life. These are the German ones. Um, Ray was on a hacker camp in the Netherlands, and that's a massive thing, 6,000 people, God knows what. So there is police patrolling on site, just to figure out if we do weird shit. And he noticed that one of, well, of course, the police officers walk around, full uniform, handcuffs, and he was like, I know that brand, that's a Lips, and you know the type number, and, and that's the same type and brand as the German shoes. He was like, would this key fit? So we walked up to the first police officer, dear police officer, can I use this key in your handcuff? And of course the cop said, fuck off, and <laughs> turned his back to him. Turned his back to him. <laughs> okay, this is not the clearest picture known to mankind, but we know what it is, it's a key, right? And if we compare this picture to the, the key we have, I mean, you could probably not decode the key from that picture, but you can see it, well, it's a bit vague, but it, you can see it's a high, low, high, and a bit lower. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can guesstimate that this has a fair chance of being the same key. And a bit later, he walked into a different police officer and he asked the same question, and he said, sure, go ahead, and boom, it's open. So this is indeed the handcuff key to all the Dutch and German Handcuffs. And if you want one, you can download it there and print your own. Because <laughs> <coughs> information wants to be free, right? These things happen. So, showing stuff about, even if it's wiggly on your butt, because it's a handy place and it's convenient to have it there. Yeah, sure. It's convenient not just for you, it's convenient for other people as well. This is what I would call a typical clean desk environment. <laughs> and people see all sorts of shite, uh, but I see because that's what I tend to gravitate to. And we put a coin next to it just to make things clear. Because if we take a picture of coin and key, it's the same as with the quick set that we were, were moving. Um, if you print this out, and you print it out size-wise that that key is, uh, that, that that coin is, is the size it should be, then you know the key is also the correct size. And then especially if you take those pictures dead on, there, there's no distortion or whatever. So what you can do, uh, so take that picture, that's the original, that's the, the, the picture, and put some thick metal fold behind it and go all kindergarten on it and stay within the lights. Does that work? Uh, it can, every now and then. So you just cut a key, literally cutting a key, and then that opens your box. Mind you, the lock has to be quite shitty and it has to have we're pretty some, some, some big tolerances in order to, for this to work, but that's a cabinet. So yes, a lot of times this actually works. And the fun thing is, normally in the top drawer there are the actual keys for the high thing that, that you actually want to get into. So of course that's convenient, and people love convenience. Because nobody thinks about security. Come on, it's convenient. I'm not going to do that. So this works on shitty locks on the subject of shitty locks. I'm not saying Samsonite is a bad brand, mind you. This is a lock. Actually, that's not correct. This is two locks. This lock is yours, if you buy the box. And this lock is not yours. This one is from the TSA. What happens if you have luggage and you travel abroad to the Americanas? Um, people at the border want to see if you're packing with stuff. So they want to open your box. And there are also other people who want to open your box to steal stuff, and most of the time those are not the same people. Um, so, you can put locks on your luggage, but then TSA will come and cut your locks off, because they want to go into your box. So what they did, they uh, came up with locks with back doors. Well, this door is at the front, but that's the same idea. And it's even printed TSA. So this lock is by the TSA. You do not have a key for this lock. This is your lock. So TSA has a couple of keys that opens all the luggage from TSA approved locks. And, well, they're not stupid good. Actually, they're quite bad. But so there are a couple of keys that open all the luggage that goes through an American airport. 
<laughs> so it's probably not useful if a if a reporter goes on to a tour at uh, at an airport and oh, how does this work? And, oh, brilliant! And, yeah, we'll use these keys. Click, boom, there are keys. It's also not helpful if they start leaking internal documents on their actual website, because um, these pictures are dead on, and of course, and the same thing happens, and we scan those, and you can download all these and print them, and then you know, open all the DSA keys. Mind you, if you know a tiny bit about lock picking, you don't need these because some of these fall open if you look at them funny. But it, it's but but yeah, I mean, key control only works as long as you're in control, right? Because <laughs> otherwise it's just keys, right? And again, you can download them here because information wants to be free. So one. One officer showing off, like, look what I have, this is brilliant. That's enough to have that whole system tumble. So key control, no, not so much. So showing keys, nope, not the best idea. This is post 9-11. Mm. <clears throat> uh, a reporter from uh, somewhere, uh, Daily News, he figured, well, he found out that you can buy the master key from the New York City subway station online. Only $25. Seven, uh, seven, uh, $27. Dollars. Quite cheap. Master key. So you can open doors, close doors, turn on alerts, turn off alerts. You can drive away with the train. <laughs> yes, that works. And so, of course, you can get in without paying. But this being post 9-11 and New York, of course, it was terrorists. Evil people can get the key to the city. This key, this key, <laughs> this key. <laughs> so by stating that evil people shouldn't have this key, they're basically given to them. And well, and just in case this picture is not high high rest enough on a different part of their website, I have this picture. <laughs> well, it's still a bit blurry, but it's laying on a map with a known grid. <clears throat> so come on. I mean, I, I've, I've given this talk a couple of times, uh, different iterations, and at one time in LA, I think, I got the question, what did they do after this? Because this was this made the media stink, and we all laughed about it. It's like, oh, they leaked the keys. So what are you going to do? We key the whole system? Maybe. That's a shitload of keys. That's a shitload of locks. It's going to be quite expensive. How long will it take for the next leak for somebody who goes back? So the question was, what did they change it? I said, I don't know. Because I can't. I don't live in New York. I don't have those keys. <laughs> Duh. Um, but even then, if I do have that key, I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to actually try that out, because we had the three ground rules, right? I don't own those locks. Probably not going to get official permission, explicit permission from the actual owner to use it, and it's probably in use. So I can't, I can't assess that. Did they change it? Until a couple years later, a new story. There's a eight dollar key. Prices dropped quite fast, and opens New York City to terror. That's, and that's exactly the same key. So a couple of years later, same situation. And of course, they have to print that key about half a page, otherwise the story doesn't come across. And then uh, two, two members in the US figured out that if you go to the online version of this uh, thing, uh, of this story, and take away some from the URL, you end up with this picture, <laughs> which is crystal clear, dead on, with all the codes on it. Uh, seriously, guys? So yeah. So. The world keeps on getting handed the information that journalists claim the world shouldn't have. It's weird. They keep on doing this. They keep on doing this. Let's watch another video. Let's bring in NBC Bay Area's investigative reporter, Vicky Wynn. Vicky, seems unbelievable that one golden key, so to speak, unlocks so many pumps. Well, we were surprised too, Raj. You could call it the key to the kingdom. It is a remnant from back in the day when all gas station pumps were made with the same lock to make it easier for inspections and maintenance. Now those keys are just providing easy access to a very lucrative crime using new high-tech technology. And in the end, we are all on the hook. Hidden behind here. 
a new Bluetooth-enabled skimmer that can rip off your credit or debit information in seconds. This universal gas pump key is making it even easier for thieves to install these new skimmer. Dog. So if you have a box that you put your credit card in and then enter digits, that's money, right? So, but if you want to skim that, you have to make neatly molded stuff to fake people or to, to, to lure people into actually using that because they might see it's not the original box. But if you have the key to the box, you can put all your crapware in there, of course, and it looks like the original thing because guess what? It's the original thing. And, well, yeah, now I have that key. And not even, not just do I have that key, I also know which blank to order. I need a wire life in yours, yeah. Which cost about 10 cents. So they keep on doing this. This is an important key. People shouldn't have this key. Here you go, have ribbons. It's uh, just weirdness. And this keeps on getting, keeps on happening. It's weird. And of course, keys get cut by people and um, we, we talked about this, this American New York City uh, subway system key. Well, there are more keys like that. There's a whole key ring that's used by fire department. Because if the fire department comes, you actually want them to get in, because, well, the building is on fire. And if your house, if, if that facility happens to be locked, then you really don't want to slow these guys down. And you get false alerts every now and then, so not every alert should uh, end up with the door being smashed in because that's going to be costly. You also can't give all the keys to the fire department because then every fire truck needs a separate truck just for the keys because, I mean, New York City is a big town. So what they do, they have some key to lock systems and every fire truck has one. And this is a locksmith that went out of business or retired or I don't know what. And he decided to put some of his surplus stock online. Well, the apocalypse might be coming because a New York Post reporter just scooped a legitimate story. An intrepid reporter for America's third dumbest paper has found a slightly disturbing item for sale on eBay. Former locksmith Daniel Ferraris sold the undercover reporter a New York City fireman's key ring for $150. The keys give the owner the ability to control elevators, circuit breakers, subway entrances, and traffic lights all over the city. They essentially become the key maker from the Matrix Reloaded. Media being media, a lot of the stories are copies from copies from copies. Not unlike keys, actually. So, what happens, well, a New York, uh, uh, well, a reporter f figures this out, this happens, and other outlets start copying it. And they even start giving it with white backgrounds, dead on pictures, so thank you guys, very useful. And actually, these guys, and uh, they did have a little think about it. Because they contacted an actual locksmith with the question, would it be okay to run this story with these pictures? A locksmith said, I never cut keys from a picture. <sighs> Can't be done, run it. <laughs> so, pro tip, if you need to speak to an expert, if you need to speak to an expert, make sure you get an expert. <laughs> it would be useful. And again, like I said, media being media, it's a copy of a copy of a copy. So also this story with these pictures get copied by other media. And they add more information to it. And the information they add to it is what exactly you can do with those locks. <laughs> so this one, the electric panel key that opens street lamps, boxes, and circuit breakers in virtual every building in New York City. Fun, right? And what could you do? Shut off power to City Hall or Police Station House. Yeah, that would be fun, especially if you combined it with other keys. This one uh, controls almost any elevator in the city. <laughs> and of course the story is, terrorists can have this. And this is the manual, because that's what it is. Uh, traffic light key, uh, it works on all the version of traffic light control panels. So you can put all the lights to red or all the lights to green. See the movie hackers? Fun stuff. <laughs> we have a fireman key, and actually that's the one we had before. And well, so that's the way it works. They keep on handing out keys that pretty much shouldn't be handed out. And they know that, because that's what the story is all about. That's what they read in the story. Okay, a bit closer to home, at least for me. This is the logo from the Amsterdam hackerspace, called Tekking. And Tekking at some point got a new building, 
they, they moved to a new building, of course, they were proud as fuck, we have a new building. And, um, well, and hackerspaces, they're not, they're siblings, right? I mean, so we have a friendly quarrel every now and then, because that's what siblings do, right? And so one of our members from Hack42, uh, or, well, chief troll officer basically, he pinged one of their guys and said, any idea if the lock on your facility is any bit secure? Because we might have a guy to assess that. So he got this picture in the mail. Well, that's not the clearest picture known to mankind. But if I would do this. Yeah. Then I'd come up with something like that, right? Just this, this. Wow. And if we load this up into our newest machine, which happens to be a laser cutter, that's quite cool, if it was a coffee machine it would have been messy, um, then you come up with a shape, with a thing that is shaped like a key, right? But it's not shaped as the key way, it's just the outline of the key, that's what I just draw. So, well first we'll label it, because otherwise we're getting way too much of those. That's the, in Comic Sans of course, the name of the uh, of the facility, so taking, and we burn it. We do have, have better draft thingies later, but uh, this works. Ta 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 ta, burn, burn. Burn. We were so proud of that machine by that back then. You get the idea. Um, focus. There we go. And then we have a key. It looks a bit like this, so clear, see through key thingy. This will not fit in your keyhole. At least I surely hope that doesn't fit because it's quite white. But what we can do, if we take a rather thin blank and put this piece of plastic on a key duplicator, then it comes up with a maybe working key. Well, at that point in time, I was not a member of Tech Inc. So I can't control if this is actual working key because it's not my key, don't have permission, all the things. But yeah, this being a hackerspace, uh, information wants to be free, so we put all these files on a public wiki, of course. Because that's the way it works. <laughs> Which kind of fucked off a lot of people. But they didn't read manuals and all that. So, but it was all fun and games. So afterwards, we, uh, day after, we uh, showed up with an actual good luck and 60 copies of uh, of that key, because that's what they requested. Mind you, 60 copies. Because they wanted copies. <laughs> so we still have the original. <laughs> and of course, now we know those works, because we have the original key. But it's all good, because afterwards I became a member, I even got a discount, because they didn't need to cut me a key. So that's, uh, <laughs> these things happen. Right? So it's, 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 it's a quarrel <laughs> about siblings, right? That's how it works. Um, we're going to run another short clip. It's in Dutch, but I do have some subtitles. So, uh, let's do this first. Er komen regelmatig wel e-mails van mensen die een en ander beweren, eigenaardige mails, maar ook opmerkelijke, zoals deze e-mail die we gekregen hebben. En dat gaat eigenlijk over iemand die beweert dat je heel eenvoudig met een sleuteltje de flitspalen open krijgt. Dus stel je voor, je wordt geflitst, je hebt een sleuteltje en leef je uit op de flitspaal of op de besturing van die paal en dat je ook die slotjes heel gemakkelijk kan kopen. Ik uh, onderzoek dat even, we zijn in Brussel en we beginnen natuurlijk bij de slotenmaker. Sleuteltjes en een senine slotje. Um, volgens de mailschrijver zit dit in de flitspaal en kan ik met die sleuteltjes de flitspaal openen. En hoeveel heeft dat gekost? Dat heeft 14 euro en 23 cent gekost. Als dit werkt voor 14 euro 23 cent, dat is opmerkelijk goedkoper dan een boete. Dit is hier dan, deze paal. Er zijn in Vlaanderen heel wat acties geweest om deze flitspalen uit te schakelen. Men heeft erop geschoten, men heeft ze in brand gestoken, um, men heeft ze zelfs afgekleefd. Maar eigenlijk is dat volgens onze mailschrijver allemaal niet nodig. Want het geheim van deze paal zit in deze kast. Deze robuuste kast is de aansturing, de sturing, de elektronica, de stroom van die flitspaal. Euro, dit sleuteltje. Dat je daar deze combinatie onschadelijk mee kan maken. En het ja, klepje gaat hier open. De sleutel past. De deur gaat open. Hier 
Hier kan je hem zelfs gewoon uh, handmatig en automatisch aan- en afzetten. Laten we dit maar uh, dicht doen. Terug op slot. Volledig nieuw. Dit is wraakroepend. Dit kan niet. Drama. We need some of those in Victoria. Oh, it could be key to life. You never know. So, you saw a video. Again, these keys shouldn't be there, but it was a moving picture. So we managed to lift this still. Uh, and this still. That's better. And this one. That seems to be the money shot. So let's analyze this. We again have a peculiar head, unlike the quick set. This is a BKS. If you know your European locks, you go like BKS. And then you can also figure out that this is the style sheet from a BKS. It's the Instacode. Uh, so we know your spacings, you know your possible depths. So if you keep on alternating between this picture and that picture and that picture and that picture and that picture, then you come up with something like this. <laughs> and then you're stuck. Because three rules. Right? I don't own this weekend. I probably will not get explicit permission to use them. And it's still in use. So we bought a speed cam. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we bought a Belgian speed cam well, just for a minute. And now we've got, oh, maybe not, but we, we owned it for that period of time. So yes, indeed, this is the key to all Belgian speed cams. So maybe we shouldn't show it. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the way it goes. So showing you keys, bad. Um, handing out your keys, worse, because then you can do weird stuff. But then you go like, no, 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 there's key control, and we have weird keyways, and yeah, but we have other boxes that can basically mill your, your, your sound bidding, uh, your grooves. It takes slugs of brass, and they look shiny and happy and all the things, and what it does, it mills these grooves instead of a normal key cutter. So you get the blank you want. So even if you have weird blanks, well, if you have a attacker who's creative and has some time and maybe some money, we'll get over that. But even if you have really weird stuff in your door, there's other ways around it. Tin soldiers. How are tin soldiers made? They're cast. That's correct. So we can do that. I mean, if you take some, some clay thingies and push your key in there. You've all seen James Bond do it 60 years ago. So it's, not, it's nothing rocket science-y. And even weird stuff like uh, Abloy keys that are well, different to cut, not difficult, but different. So they still work. Now the tolerances on keys like on the right one, those are quite tight. So if you use normal clay, that might set and shrink or expand while it cools down. And especially if you put cast metal in that, that will expand a bit more. So you have to experiment a bit with your casting material. We figured out that the stuff that the dentist used to make impressions of your teeth, it's expensive as fuck, but that works perfectly. So be friend a dentist. The, uh, one of the champions in Germany is a dentist. Just saying. And um, there are kits on, on sale doing that. This is the clam. They use baby powder, otherwise it sticks to everything. They use some clay and there's some easy melting metal and that's it. It works. And on lower quality keys with normal clay, that's definitely an option. It works like a charm. Even on weird stuff like this. I mean, that's not an abloy, not high profile, whatever. But still, I mean, that's the original. That's the copy. And it looks a bit funky, but on the important bits, it fits. And if you take it out of the mold slowly and neatly, even if this does, doesn't work, you can still remelt it and then you're done. So showing keys bad, giving keys away only for a better part of a minute, bad. Just don't do it. Okay. This is a Dutch hacker. It's basically the reason that we're still voting on paper in the Netherlands. And he did some WikiLeaks stuff, whatever. <laughs> Yes,
station wees met plein. Dus plein Amsterdam. En we gaan hier uh, een beetje rond lopen om te laten zien wat wij hier in de jaren 90 al hebben uitgesproken. En wij, uh, wij liepen hier in de jaren 90, begin jaren 90 liepen we hier rond en we hadden uh, door allerlei toeval ontstaan een uh, sleutel in handen waarmee we het metro systeem in konden. De sleutel past er letterlijk overal op. En dan in het geval dat er onder dit station allerlei interessante dingen liggen. Uh, schuilbunkers, deze uh, spannend, zeker in die tijd van het geweldig. show a prop. Right? So, it's not hard to run these stories. I do get that we want visuals, but you didn't have to show the actual key. And he did it. And even if you saw him sliding it in and out the actual lock, he had his hand around it, and well, he's paranoid as fuck, which rightly so. Um, but not showing your keys, well, that's not convenient. Yeah, true. But there are solutions. This one is de uh, branded DEFCON because I like fail with DEFCON on it. Um, this is basically a tiny box that you slide your keys in and out of. It's called a key port. And you can get USB thingies and openers and lights and keys. Um, so what they do is they supply these inserts for your box. And of course, they have to know which inserts to send you. So they want you to send pictures of your key. <laughs> and like I said, it's branded DEF CON, because this was a, a, a special edition thingy. So you go to DEF CON, the biggest uh, uh, conference in America for hackers. Uh, they call it the most evil uh, Wi-Fi network in the world, because you will get pwned if you have your Wi-Fi switched on. And so the people there are the most paranoid people you could find normally in security professionals, and that crowd, you ask, sent me pictures of your key. Well, I mean, I'll take it for granted. I mean, they do have in the fine print, uh, if you want added security, you could put some post-its over your actual bidding, but that shouldn't be added security. You're, you're selling a security device to the uber paranoid. And if you actually want it secure, you have to go into a fine print? Come on. That has to, that has to be the default, right? At, at least that might be. If you sell security, make it, at least try to make it secure out of the box. Okay, so we all get that this is, this is maybe not a good idea, right? Showing your passwords everywhere is bad. So if this is a bad idea, why do people think that this is a good idea? This is a website that's called pleasebreak.in. Those reasons. The owner is not from India, but well. What he does, he built a Twitter crawler that searches for posts on Twitter with tags like 
Newkey, new house, and has a picture. And then automatically puts this online. So we have keys, pictures of keys, nice, neat pictures of keys, straight on. And of course, this is all click through. So if I click this, I can see where the Twitter feed of Mrs. Hammer or of Gabriel that has a new key. And he lives in the city of Turlock. I don't know how big the city of Turlock is, but I'm pretty sure we can come up with some Google Street View plugin thingy that can figure out where exactly this is in Turlock. And because I have Gabriel's Twitter feed, I can probably figure out when he's on holiday and where he works. And I know he lives there recently, so the TV is probably new. And come on. I mean, you don't have to show that picture. You don't have to. And yeah, maybe on Twitter it's a bad idea, but I mean, cameras are everywhere, even if you don't put it out there. If you live in London, there are a gazillion cameras, and we all carry uh, listening devices with built-in cameras, and sometimes we use them telephones, but we all drag those around. So there are high-def cameras around everywhere that are really capable enough to make pictures detailed enough to make keys from. So you should really shield your keys when you start using that. I mean, Google Glass didn't really catch on, but now they're already looking at contact lenses, so people looking at your keys might be enough. Uh, and if it's a competent locksmith, he pr probably can remember the code by just looking at it. But even if that's not the case, pictures can be made everywhere. OK, we have one more tiny example. This is a picture of a bad person. He's a killer. I know that because he got convicted for a killing. And he, well, he got put in jail. And then he walked out of jail. And that was because the design of the master key of that facility was printed on front of the prisoner's information handbook. Yes. And a copy of said handbook was handed out upon the arrival of every inmate. That's, come on. So, security can be easy, and security can be hard. But it's always quite easy to fuck it up, so please don't. That's me, any questions? <laughs> Do we have questions? There's a question in the back. There's stuff that they just use if anybody wants. It's called Algenite, and you can buy it. It's actually not that expensive. You just have to buy like a kilogram bag. Okay, uh, the casting material for keys uh, is alginite. That's one of the uh, better stuff. Um, uh, you need a low melting metal, and those are not that hard to find, but finding a low melting metal that doesn't kill you in the process, that's a bit hard, because a lot of this stuff is quite toxic. And, well, uh, contains lead and all sorts of stuff, bad fumes. Sorry? There are a couple, yeah. I mean, uh, and they have weird properties that they expand when they cool down, just like ice crystals. So they fill the shape of the mold without leaving any slack. So if the mold's good, they're, they're yeah, true, but if, you're, if, if you do get some shrinkage while cooling down, that might also hit tolerances. So it's, it's, uh, it depends on what, what, what you actually want to do. But yes, there are several metals that are, can be useful for actually casting keys. Any more questions or comments? So guess we're it. Thank you.